Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to solve a very simple problem. Finding the change in stored energy of a system as it goes from a given state 1 to a final state 2. Plenty of information are supplied about the states and we are supposed to use the SL model. More about this model can be found in chapter 3 of the textbook. Uh, also, the properties and states it describes in, in chapter 0 and 1 uh, of this textbook you can find. Uh, we are supposed to use the SL model and we have already logged in as a student uh, and so we'll go and launch the suitable test step. We go to the test steps page and we track down test steps state system state. Once we click there the final step is to select the material model, the thermodynamic model. It's called the SL model in this case. And that brings up the hands-on examples page. Uh, you can find uh, the video solution as well as test codes. We'll discuss what is test codes in a minute uh, uh, by, on this page. We'll use this problem to also illustrate a few features uh, of, of every test step. You will notice that as you go to the test step page, clicking this leftmost tab, you can always switch back and forth between discuss among discussion, hands-on tab, hands-on and uh, you know the test step tab. But you got to be careful. And the, at the bottom, uh, all these uh, tabs you cannot switch. Once you get out of test steps tab, uh, you have to restart your solution. So watch out for the tabs at the the task bar of the test web page. Okay. So what are the commonalities among different, you'll find the different test steps. You'll find the same look and feel across all the apps in this, in this, in this site. Well, so let's just uh, go over a few features. So just like the upper level tabs uh, takes you to upper level uh, panels, inside the, tab, inside the test step you'll find the state panel, graphics panel, I.O. panel, tabs, etc. Also, notice that everywhere you will find this ubiquitous help button uh, and it, it responds to a particular, either you do a mouse over or click on it, click again to make it disappear, and it's very context sensitive. So for instance, if you're inside I.O. panel and you want to know what this I.O. panel is about, you click here and you get information on how to understand the I.O. panel, you know, a, a plenty of information about that. So let's go back to the state panel and uh, the best way to understand is by solving a, uh, understand it is by solving a problem. So let's get started. In this particular problem, uh, state one uh, is already selected and the working substance is iron. So let's go and select iron. Now we want to enter the temperature. There are several ways. You simply click on the temperature itself to go to the input mode, or you can also click on the value field. There's a subtle difference between these two, two techniques, and I'll, I'll tell, talk about it a little later. Uh, anyways, so click anywhere on this property and enter the temperature, which is 30 degrees Celsius. Degree Celsius is already selected by default. Also notice that uh, velocity and height or the elevation are set to zero. Uh, in most problems, this is so. So you've got to watch out for that because in this particular problem, uh, they, may not, they are not zero for state, state two. Uh, the mass is given here, so let's enter mass. But notice, if I now want to also enter, say, volume, just suppose, I cannot click and go to the input mode. Why? If you go if you click here and keep an eye on this, this is, this is where uh, the help information comes. Help information appears on this panel. Whenever you put a mouse over uh, or if there's an error, etc. So suppose I want to calcul calculate the volume. Notice that as soon as you click there, it says that the volume we are trying to enter is a dependent variable. So you cannot enter a dependent variable. Same with if you want to find the want to enter internal energy, internal energy we cannot. However, if the temperature has been made unknown, now we could enter internal energy if we wanted to. Okay, 
So now let's calculate the state, 30 degrees Celsius, 50 kg. Those are the information given. Based on that, as much information as possible has been found. Notice that the properties are color-coded, uh, which means uh, the, the material properties are properties that are calculated as soon as you select a material. And thermodynamic properties describe the intrinsic properties of the state that describe the equilibrium. And extrinsic and extensive properties, again, you, you go read chapter 3 to understand uh, all these different types of properties. Okay, so let's go to state 2 now, about which, again, we know some information. Mass is the same. Notice that we can put an equation instead of uh, hard numbers. And the temperature is 300 degrees Celsius. Uh, velocity is given to us. And height is also given to us, right? So therefore, state 2 is calculated. As much information about state 2 is possible is calculated. Variables such as H and J are not calculated because pressure is not given in this problem. Had we known the pressure, those variables also would be calculated. So now, to change, to calculate the answer, we go to the I.O. panel and we define, suppose we say delta, uh, we define delta E, a variable, a user-defined variable, equals mass times E2 minus E1. If I hit enter, notice the answer is calculated here. Uh, on the on the output area. So 6162 kilojoules must be my answer. Delta E has been found. Well, to save time, I've already typed in a couple of equations here. Just like we found delta E, I, I, I typed in delta Ke and delta Pe in terms of VEL2 and VEL1 and Z2 and Z1. And if you hit the calculate button, you can see the answers are Oh, I have to divide the delta Pe by 1,000 to get kilojoule, my bad. And so the answers are calculated and displayed here. So the contribution of Ke and Pe, as you can see, is less than a percent or about a percent compared to delta E uh, that we calculated. Okay. I want to show you a couple of other things quickly. Just suppose the final temperature, to do the what if, what if scenario, we can go a couple of different ways. One is, suppose we define the final temperature. Let's, we, let, let's call it temp2 or something. Uh, temp2 equals uh, 300 plus 273. If you recall, SI unit is Kelvin, and the final temperature is 300. Notice that we selected variable temp2 rather than T2. We cannot use T2 because T2 is a, a reserved variable. Uh, that's the temperature of state 2. So here I'm trying to illustrate the communication back and forth between the state panel and I.O. panel. When we calculated delta Ke and delta Pe, we took advantage of velocity 2 and velocity 1, Z2 and Z1. Those were, those were defined in the state panel. Now we are defining something called temp2 in the I.O. panel. So what is the advantage of that? Okay, let's first do calculate in the local panel to register the changes. So temp2 has been calculated as 573 Kelvin. So now we go back to the state panel, and we can say that T2, instead of hard, you know, hard coding the number here, we can always say, no, T2 is equals temp2. If I hit enter, the state is calculated. And by the way, if you put the pointer over temp2 at the top in this area, keep an eye on, uh, so there are two help panels. There is one here and one is at the very bottom. Uh, what at the top panel, what you will see is when you put a pointer over the value of the, uh, of the variable, T2 equals temp2, that's the equation we entered, equals 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, equals 300, 299 point something Celsius, about 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if you now come to, so obviously no result should change because of that. To, sh to make sure everything is fine, click on the super calculate button. 
what happens is that everything is recalculated. And if you go back to the user codes and calculate, you'll find that our answers uh, are, are about the same. Now, the advantage of what you have done is that, remember the what if study, now we can just go to here and say, what if the temperature was 500 degrees Celsius? We can click calculate to register the change. The temp2 has been changed and if you click super calculate, everything has been recalculated and actually the output is there at the bottom along with the clutter and you will see that the answers have changed uh, all the answers reflect uh, the change once the temperature is changed how the answers are affected well you will also notice that a bunch of code has been generated when you click su on super calculate uh, the purpose of that so these are all the codes this is this is the code generated by uh, uh, you know, up to here, these codes are called test codes. Essentially, it tells, uh, tells you exactly what we entered in the problem in a, in a systematic manner. And these are the code that we wrote. So these are called the user codes, and these are together they're called test codes. What's the purpose of that? Well, if you copy and paste the code here, suppose I just say Control A and Control C, copy the entire code, and save it for later use. Uh, for instance, I can go to, suppose it's another time, you go to thermofluids.net, test steps, uh, come to the same place, SL model, and now suppose we want to restart the solution for whatever reason. We go to the IO panel. Notice that right now the solution is not there, all the states are empty. IO panel, we control V, and all we do is, is click the load button. What happens? The state is loaded and you notice that the solution is repopulated. State 1 and state 2 are there. Just to show you a few other features, suppose uh, pressure were known, suppose the pressure was 100 kPa, then notice that the state has been completely calculated and also the, the, the picture here of the state reflect the, the change of state. So for instance, suppose the pressure one is also 100 kPa. So as you can see, the color kind of represents the change of state. Uh, also, there are other features such as, suppose you have to, uh, to another state, we could go and start a new state, or you could use one of these buttons. If you use this plus button, the state is kind of cloned and state three is generated based on state uh, state two. So notice that velocity and height has been picked up from state two. So it's identical state, state two and three. So if I calculate this state, there'll be no change. The color is the same. You can go to the graphics panel, uh, state one, two and three are on top of each other. That's why only one of them is being shown here. Well, I don't want to spend too much time on one problem. So we'll build on this solution. I hope that this helps you figure out some of the features of test steps and we are only scratching the surface here.